Over the last several months, with the bipartisan and bicameral COVID-19 task force assisting, we have seen a tremendous turnaround when it comes to how our state rolls out this vaccine. So I want to say thank you to you, Acting Secretary Beam, Senator Ament, who is our Senate Republican Caucus representative, and Senator Haywood, who serves as the representative for the Democratic Senate Caucus. And as this vaccine becomes more available, I'm interested in what you have seen as some of the biggest challenges, particularly when it comes to how we provide seniors, especially those without access to the internet, the option to sign up to get the vaccine. And I think most of the vaccine signups require internet access. I know that you assured uh, telephone uh, access as well. Um, but when I speak to some of my senior citizens who call into my office, um, they, they're struggling for internet access, for email access. Um, some seniors who are homebound getting that vaccine. How are you addressing the vaccine rollout for our seniors, particularly those in our most rural areas that also have limited access to mass vaccination sites? Thank you so much, Senator. I, I appreciate it. And it truly has been a team effort on, on really finding ourselves um, in a better position. And to that end, um, we are very proud of being able to say that 87.1% of Pennsylvania's population over age 65 has received one shot. The national average is 80%. And so we're over 7% above the national average for our senior population, which you know have been a top priority for us in that we do want to give credit where credit is due and you know two weeks ago we issued three weeks ago we issued an order whereby we had our provider community that's receiving the vaccine work hand in hand with our area agencies for aging and our medicaid mcos to really help those seniors that came with those struggles exactly as you articulated either um, frustration with the internet or a preference for not being on the phone, we wanted to give them again a third channel to be able to really get that vaccine and do that matchmaking. And the providers, the AAAs, the Medicaid MCOs all rose to the challenge and were really able to make great strides in getting a lot of our senior population vaccinated. With that said, we're not done. Um, we know that there's gonna have to be uh, continued efforts to again, increase that access for seniors. We hope to enhance working with our AAAs um, particularly for the homebound population that you had just mentioned. And we're working very closely with the Department of Aging on really the ability to have the same level of dedicated resources coming to light, um, which hopefully we'll be able to discuss as early as next week um, for folks. Again, really giving a lot of our senior population the option that if they want that one dose shot, if that is available to us after tomorrow afternoon, that we can use that to try and reach a homebound population, but where they might prefer the two dose shot, we would also likewise create that path for them. And so we are proud of what we've done, but we know there's still a lot to go and we look forward to working with some of those really strong partners in reaching that senior population. That, that's certainly very encouraging. I had uh, heard through public radio 90.5 WESA out of Pittsburgh, they cited a Department of Agent Aging figure that estimated 700,000 seniors are still not vaccinated as of April 5th. So um, hearing uh, those vaccination rates that you've given us today, um, again, knowing that this is the largest, most vulnerable demographic in the Commonwealth, I, I look forward to those efforts. Um, over the last few weeks, there's been a lot of coverage over an idea currently being rolled out in New York for vaccine passports. And New York spent about $2.5 million to develop a smartphone app for people to use or, or to show a, a QR code to provide proof of the vaccine. Is your department considering rolling out any similar program in Pennsylvania? Sure. So Senator Haywood and uh, Senator Ahmed can likewise speak to the fact that this has been a topic of discussion within the legislative task force. And really what we've all coalesced around is that at this time, the vaccine passport concept is not something that we are considering. We are dedicating ourselves entirely to being able to reach what is right now 55% of Pennsylvanians who have not received that first shot. And we wanna make sure that our hesitancy and all that we're doing to really educate and cut through misinformation um, is where our heads are focused, not on the vaccine passport concept or the perpetuation of it in Pennsylvania. Well, thank you, 
Acting Secretary Beam. And as you may know, I am working with Senators Brooks and Senator Judy Ward to ensure that the state cannot require a passport for routine day-to-day -day activities um, and would certainly appreciate uh, a signature by the governor on that measure. Um, if I could now turn to uh, some follow-up. Uh, the gentleman from Delaware County spoke to data-driven results. Um, and throughout this pandemic and, and before your tenure as head of the agency, we were always told that the administration is following the data. And as the senator for a district that neighbors Maryland, we have seen challenging restrictions on interstate travel uh, due to data on COVID cases. And at a press conference two weeks ago, you highlighted that the increased case count has been attributed to out-of-state travel. However, when looking at the numbers from the contact tracers, I don't see the correlation between out-of-state travel and increased COVID-19 case counts based on the data that your department has provided. So can you tell the committee what data you are using to say that out-of-state travel is leading to a rise in case counts in Pennsylvania? Sure, Senator. So I just want to put in context that statement, and I don't want to be very clear that there is not one sole factor for the increase in case counts in Pennsylvania, as it has been throughout this entire pandemic. There's always a multiple factors for purposes of evaluating both case count increases and then the following hospitalization and deaths. Really, first and foremost, we spoke to variants. The presence of the variants in Pennsylvania is increasing significantly. And we know those variants are more contagious. They just spread, they're more infectious. And so we know that that's also one of the lead contributing factors to the increase in case counts in Pennsylvania. Likewise, this governor has in a very measured way progressed through the relaxation of mitigation efforts. And we know as folks increase, they're going about their days in a way that they don't necessarily have the occupancy restrictions as um, low levels as we had previously, that there is going to be an increase in case counts that frankly come from that. And then frankly, the, the increasing in travel, um, where we find ourselves is situated on the Atlantic seaboard, right? We have the I-95 corridor. And so we know that as we watch states with case increases in New Jersey and New York, generally that follows that Pennsylvania likewise has a similar path whereby we also experience those case counts and those increases. And if you watch how the cases have progressed through those states recently, um, it's very, it's, it's similar in creating a pattern there. And so um, I'm happy to have the team check with our epidemiolo epidemiologists and see if there um, are more discrete data points. But I just wanted to make sure that I framed that as that is not the sole reason for our case counts. And, and really, it is a broader um, multi-factor causation where there is the increase. And, and I, I appreciate that. I think when dramatic and potentially draconian measures are in place or put in place that the people need to know what data you are driving uh, those decisions based on. And um, it, it must be transparent and it must be clear because when it is not, that's when people don't trust, don't believe, and, and don't want to comply. So. Um, I, I think that transparency with all the data points that you're using, sharing those with the public is imperative. 